Hi, I'm David Alford. Uh, what you're about to see is a few selections from my performance of Truman Capote's brilliant short story, A Christmas Memory. It's the centerpiece of our show, A Holiday to Remember. Uh, we performed it uh, for almost two decades in and around the Mid-South. We put it on hiatus for a few years, but we missed it, so we're bringing it back. And now we're very excited to be able to bring it to you. Thanks for watching. Imagine a morning in late November, the coming of winter morning many years ago. Consider the kitchen of a spreading old house in a country town. A woman with shorn white hair is standing at the kitchen window. She's small and sprightly, like a bantam hen face is remarkable. It's not unlike Lincoln's. Craggy like that and tinted by sun and wind, but it is delicate too and finely boned and her eyes are sherry colored and timid. Oh my, she exclaims, her breath smoking the window pane. It's fruitcake weather. Together, we guide our buggy, a dilapidated baby carriage, out through the garden and into a grove of pecan trees. In the spring times, we fill it with herbs and wildflowers and ferns for our porch pots. In the summer, we pile it with picnic paraphernalia, sugar cane fishing poles, roll it down to the edge of a creek. It has its winter uses too, as a truck for hauling firewood from the yard to the kitchen, and is a warm bed for Queenie, our tough little orange and white rat terrier who has survived distemper and two rattlesnake bites. Queenie's trotting beside it now. Of all the ingredients that go into our fruit cakes, whiskey is the most expensive, as well as the hardest to obtain, because y'all know state law forbids its sale. So the next day, Having completed our more prosaic shopping, we set out for Mr. Ha Ha's business address, a sinful, to quote public opinion, fish fry and dancing cafe down by the river. Now we've been there before and on the same errand, but in previous years, our dealings have always been with Ha Ha's wife, an iodine dark Indian woman with brassy peroxided hair and a dead tired disposition. Tell the truth, we've never even laid eyes on her husband. Although we've heard that he is an Indian too. He's a giant, razor scars across his cheeks. And they call him Ha Ha because he's so gloomy. A man who never laughs. Well, I knock at the door. Queenie barks. My friend calls, Mrs. Ha Ha, ma'am. Invite the home. Buddy, are you awake? This is my friend. She's calling to me from her room, which is next to mine. An instant later, she appears, carrying a candle, sits at the edge of my bed. Oh, I can't sleep a hoot, she declares. My mind's just jumping like a jackrabbit. We huddle in the bed and she squeezes my hand. I love you. Seems like your hand used to be so much smaller. I guess I hate to see you grow up. When you're grown up, will we still be friends? And I say, always. But the beginnings of dawn splash us like cold water. We're up, wide-eyed and wandering while we wait for the rest of the house to awaken. Quite deliberately, my friend drops a kettle on the kitchen floor. <laughs> I tap dance in front of closed doors. One by one, the household emerges looking as though they'd like to kill us both. But it's Christmas, so they can't. My friend's got a better haul. Sakasatsumas, that's, that's her best present. She's proudest 
however, of the white wool shawl knitted for her by her married sister, although she says, of course, that her favorite gift is the kite that I built her. And it is very beautiful. But it's not nearly as beautiful as the one that she made me, which is blue and scattered with gold and green good conduct stars. Moreover, my name is painted on it. Buddy. <laughs> 